Join me in this new video series where I attempt to uncover the anatomy of rose and perfumery. We're going to start off in this video by first looking at how and where rose is harvested and also how it's extracted into the raw materials which are used in perfumery. I'm also going to look at some rose oil that I have and some rose bases and let you guys know what they smell like. Then in a series of future videos, we're going to go and take a deep dive into the constituent aroma chemicals which are present inside rose and we're going to carefully go and study those and look at how they each individually contribute to the smell of rose. Finally, at the end of the series, I'm going to attempt to build my own rose accord and then see how it can be modified. So if you're interested in learning about rose, stick around for this new series. Right, so in this video, I really want to focus on rose itself. So firstly, I'm going to take a look at natural rose and how it's harvested and also what that smells like. So firstly, I'm going to share the books which I got most of the information from for this video. So this one here is called Scent and Chemistry. This is really good if you've got a chemical background and it goes over quite a lot of information about the constituents, but also it has a lot of other interesting information. This book at the moment is quite hard to find, but you can also pre-order at the moment a new version, which is about to be released in a month or so, and that will be a lot cheaper. So I'll put a link in the description for this. And then also, the other book I've got here is Perfume and Flavor Materials of Natural Origin. This book is really good for information about the different types of raw materials that can be produced from rose. So, for example, how the essential oil may differ from the absolute. So, let's begin. Firstly, why the whole video series on rose? The reason I haven't really looked at florals too much in the past is, firstly, because they're really, really expensive, and secondly, Usually florals aren't so much to my taste, it's not really my favourite kind of smells, so I've never really gravitated towards them. But I was starting to realise at one point that the mid notes in my perfumes often fall a bit flat. It's not a surprise that a lot of floral notes are mid notes, so one of the reasons that I might be having trouble with the mid notes is possibly because of my lack of knowledge of florals. Also, I've got all of these uh, raw materials, which are florals or floral constituents, which I haven't really explored that much. So in this series, by analysing or at least evaluating the constituents of rose, it will give me a good opportunity to learn about some of those raw materials in more detail than I have done before. So, why start with rose? Well, rose is just so synonymous with perfumery. I guess I could have started with jasmine, but I do kind of feel that those are the big two florals, the ones that are really, really famous and used all over the place. Honestly, if you go and look at any perfume on Fragrantica or some other website online that lists the notes inside of perfumes, you will see rose and jasmine pop up time and time and time again. And the reason I thought that rose would be a good place to start is simply because I have got some rose oil and I have got two different rose bases. And then I've also got a lot of the constituents of rose already here. So I thought it's a good place to start. And I think that from what I've read, it's not too hard to make a beginner's rose accord. So why is rose used so much in perfumery? Well, after having a look in these books, what I managed to find out was apparently it's due to its rich, tenacious and radiant profile. So what that essentially means is it's very complex and luxurious. It's tenacious, which means it's very long lasting, but it's also radiant or quite projecting. So what this implies to me is adding rose to your perfumes will make them project more or have more silage, sillage, however you want to say it. And also it will last a long time, so allow your perfume to continue to perform, as you might want to call it, over time. So potentially this is a reason that a lot of people are using rose in their perfumes all the time. Anyway, one of the first questions you may ask about rose is why is it so expensive in the first place? This book, Scent and Chemistry, which was published in 2012, says the price of rose starts at about 5,000 US dollars per kilogram. And from a quick search online just now, I found that the prices online seem to start today in 2022 from around $7,000 per kilogram. So that's really expensive. You may be wondering why rose absolute, but also rose essential oil costs thousands of dollars per kilogram. Well, it's all to do with the way that rose is harvested. So firstly, the harvest season for rose is confined to about only one month per year. And in addition to that, all of the rose petals have to be harvested quite early in the morning. And this is because if you leave the rose petals to the afternoon before extracting them, then you get 
about only 50% of the product out that you would have got otherwise. So in order to make it efficient and worth doing, you have to harvest all the petals in the morning. So you have a load of people who need to be quite skilled in harvesting the flower heads of the rows, and then they have to also be able to quickly get them into sacks, weigh them, and transport them to where they're processed. And this all has to be done within a short space of time, um, which means because you've only got so much time to do it, you have to hire quite a lot of workers. So apparently it takes 800 man hours to collect three to four tons of flowers, and then it's those three to four tons of flowers that are required just to produce one kilogram of rose oil or rose absolute. That's crazy. Three to four tons. That's three to four thousand kilograms just needed in order to produce one kilogram of the final oil or absolute. Anyway, where are these roses grown and harvested? Well, it mostly depends on the variety. So there are actually a lot of different varieties of rose which you might find in gardens, but only two varieties are really used in perfumery, and that is the damask rose and rosa centifolia. So the damask rose or rosa damascana, that rose is mostly grown in Bulgaria, but it's also grown in Turkey, Crimea, and the Middle East. Then you also have the centifolia rose, and that's grown mostly in Morocco, but also in France. So once you have these roses and you've harvested them, no matter which type, you can do pretty much one of two things. You can either go and make an essential oil, which is where you steam distill the rose. So you take a load of water, you, um, you boil that, and you use that steam to collect the oil out of the petals, and then you uh, condense it, you cool it so that the oil separates out. Or you can make an absolute, and when you make an absolute, it's a two-stage process. So first you make a concrete, which is where you take the, uh, the flowers and you extract them with a organic solvent, um, something like hexane potentially, I'm not sure exactly which solvent they use. And then in the second stage, you make an alcohol or an ethanol extraction of the concrete and that forms your absolute. So I have got some rose oil here which is some rose oil that I got when I was on holiday in Bulgaria. And this was quite a long time ago, admittedly. Um, it's a tiny vial of about one milliliter, which costs something like 20 pounds. So as you can see, the price of rose oil is pretty expensive. And this is the rose of the damask type. So I don't actually have any centifolia rose. I'm not really gonna be covering that in this series simply just because I don't have it. So I've got the rose essential oil. Unfortunately, I don't have the absolute, but what I do have is two different rose bases. I've got rose essence, which is a base by Firminish, or its full name, rose essence 184010. And then I've got a rose base by Givaudan, which is rose Givco 217. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and evaluate these different roses. So the real rose essential oil, and then the two rose bases, and then I'm gonna let you know what I think they smell like. So just in case you don't know what a rose base is, that is when a company essentially tries to recreate the rose smell from their own proprietary in-house blend of certain uh, other raw materials. It could be a mixture of naturals, there could be some real rose in there, there could be other essential oils potentially, like geranium, and then of course, synthetic aroma chemicals will also be in there. And if you didn't know who Givaudan and Firmenich are, uh, Givaudan and Firmenich are two of the biggest international fragrance corporations in the world. So this is like a big international company, something like Coca-Cola or Nestle, uh, a company with offices all over the world and lots of labs with scientists dedicated to researching how to make the best possible rose recreation amongst obviously a lot of other different smells. It's not just rose that they look at. So now we're gonna take a look at these and see what they smell like. Okay, so I've just gone and dipped these three scent strips into these three raw materials. And already I can smell the rose from here. So the rose indeed is very diffusive. That means when I put it on the scent strip, I don't actually have to go and smell it. I can already smell the air around me. It's just full of this, uh, this delicate rose scent. It's kind of like as if there were a load of rose flowers around the scent of petals. That kind of thing. And I'll quickly note 
that all of these raw materials are pre-diluted to 10% in alcohol before having dipped them. The reason I dilute the materials to 10% is that this is a much better reference point um, I find when evaluating the raw materials. If you dilute all the raw materials first and then smell them, it means, well, firstly, you've got some alcohol. So actually they evaporate much more like they would evaporate in a actual perfume you're making. But also it means that you're less likely to overload your olfactory receptors in your nose, um, which can cause you to quickly lose the ability to actually smell the raw material, which can therefore go and distort or warp your sense of smell. So let's start off with the real rose oil, the damask rose oil from Bulgaria. What does it smell like? So indeed, this is, it's a pretty crazy raw material actually, because when you smell it, it smells like there are so many different layers and levels of complexity to it. So when they say it's a, a rich raw material, you really, really get that. And I find it really interesting with a rose because, well, it smells, it smells like this kind of soft, um, very delicate, like you would expect rose to smell, right? It really creates this kind of light, uh, airy, you know, you could say like pink aura, which is very kind of breezy and delicate. But at the same time, you've got this very natural side to it. You've got this kind of, um, I would say almost oily, um, but you've got, I guess you've got these spicy kind of aspect. When they say it's got spicy undertones, you do get that with this rose oil. You get these kind of, um, you get this kind of full spectrum of uh, how you smell it. You've got a lot of different facets going on here. And it's very, it's just very interesting to smell. You've got kind of slight fruity elements. You've got, it's a little bit sharp, but really the whole thing's really softened and rounded out. And then you've got kind of bright, uh, almost kind of white, kind of airy kind of aspects to it. But then you've also got something that's a lot more dark and almost like the crevices and as if you went into some kind of rug shop and went right to the back room and you found some kind of centuries old rug and it was shrouded in mystery, you get that kind of effect as well. So yeah, really, really interesting, uh, the rose oil on its own. So next I'm gonna go and look at the rose essence. So the rose essence base, this is Feminish, is recreation of the damask rose oil. And the consensus online is that this seems to be the most accurate uh, recreation of a damask rose. So when I smell this, yeah, it is surprisingly quite similar. But at the same time, it's, it's certainly quite different as well. I mean, it's not, it smells like the same, uh, the same olfactory territory, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite capture the same level of, let's say, complexity or mystery. However, that said, it's not as if it's a bad smell. I would say that it is a little bit more maybe soapy, it does smell slightly more synthetic than the real one. Though not to a massive degree, to be fair to it. Uh, certainly not to the point where you would smell this and instantly think, oh, oh this is a horrible kind of synthetic uh, raw material. Oh, but it does seem a really good recreation, to be fair. I would say it's a bit sharper. Um, I'll get into this later when I look at the constituent raw materials, but you can definitely smell the geranial, I would say, which is kind of a fruity, citrus, sharp, almost citronella-like component of the rose. I would say that's quite prominent in this rose base. That says, I do think this rose base does a really good job of capturing both that kind of quite natural, oily uh, aspect, almost that spicy, kind of turpentine, oily aspect of the rose, which makes it quite natural, with the uh, light, quite serene, uh, more delicate rose petal smell. So I think it's pretty good base. And then over here, we've got the Rose Jivco. So I haven't actually really used these other two bases so much before, but the Rose Jivco is something I've had for a while now, and I find it really easy to go and use this in a load of perfumes. So let's see how it compares. Now, instantly when I smell the Rose Jivco, it's definitely a little bit more different than the other two. And the thing about the Rose Jivco is it doesn't have that kind of dark side to it. It doesn't really have I think the, the spicy side, it doesn't have the oily side to it. To me, the Rose Jivco is really focusing on the more sweet 
um, a bit more fruity um, side of the rose. It also, again, like the rose essence, has a very slight soapy undertone. But overall, I wouldn't say it's a soapy smell. I wouldn't say it smells bad. Actually, I think this is a really nice base as well. But it's definitely a different side of the rose. I think this rose Jivko, it's a lot more like the <laughs> kind of dressed up, um, let's say like Disney version of the rose. Whereas the the real damask rose and what is captured a bit better in the feminish base is that kind of complex, mysterious, uh, darker side to the rose. So yeah, this uh, rose Jivko for me is a bit closer to the kind of rose you might get in a Turkish delight or some kind of um, rose petal tea, rose water, that kind of thing. Um, but I have to say, all of these raw materials, I think they're all pretty good. Obviously, I haven't used them that much, or I can't compare how they would fit into a perfume at this stage. Maybe later on in the series we could do a video on something like that. But for now, I've got to say, um, all of these rose bases, I think, are great. Well, the two rose bases and the real rose. And it'll be very interesting to now move on to the raw materials or the constituent raw materials in the, the other video and see how these kind of complete pictures or these the photograph, as you could say, with the real rose or the, the paintings of it with the bases, how they compare to the individual, uh, as you might like to say, colours that are used in the rose palette to make up these full rose pictures. So I don't know if that was a bit of a weird analogy, but I'm going to stick with it. Stick with me in the next video, which I'll hopefully release in the next few days or weeks, and we'll start looking at the first constituents of the rose.